This is our chance to put the darkness of the past four years behind us, to end the anger, the insults, the division, the violence, and start fresh in America. The Biden campaign blasting President Trump's response to months of nationwide unrest as the president accuses Joe Biden of staying silent too long on the violence and rioting. Joining us now, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany. Kaylee, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. A lot to get to with you this morning. You just saw that, that message from the Biden campaign. And I'm sure you'll be quick to point out what many are pointing out, and that the Biden campaign was silent on this for so long during the DNC and other times. But now they are speaking out against it. They're putting out a plan. How is the president countering that message of the dark days that they are pointing to under President Trump? He's countering with action, not cheap words. Um, we know uh, that it is the responsibility of governors and mayors to control their streets, but look at what happened when mayors and governors came to the presidents for assistance. In Minneapolis, within 24 hours, there was peace on the streets. In Kenosha, within 24 hours of National Guard coming in, there was peace. This president offers action to secure our communities and keep our families safe versus the cheap words of Democrats who have been silent for far too long as police officers like David Dorn have died and sweet little children like legend Talaferro and others. When you look at how the president is polling on this issue in some of the key battleground states, Kaylee, I'll put it up on the screen. Joe Biden is ahead of the president in, on, in Arizona on this issue, about even in North Carolina, although leading by about a point. But he's also ahead, Joe Biden, in Wisconsin on policing and criminal justice. So what is the president actively doing to show voters or sway voters to his way of thinking on this issue? So we don't believe that polling is accurate. And look, when we went to Kenosha, uh, this is a Democrat area. Democrat stronghold for decades had not been won since Richard Nixon, the county we were in. When we went there, down the streets were people lined with Trump signs for miles. People recognize, they might not want to talk to a pollster, but they recognize his action. We've offered National Guard. We've offered help to Portland. We've set up Operation Legend and have had many, many arrests, hundreds, if not a thousand arrests up at this point. Point. So we're taking action because protecting our families is paramount. It's inexcusable when you have more than 50 uh, homicides and casualties in Chicago in a short period of time. You know, you see what's happening in Rochester with the police chief there now joining a long list of police chiefs that have stepped away from their police forces in recent months, along with the entire command set that are there, Kaylee. And Newsweek takes on the president's law and order message and suggests why it may not work. Uh, it says Trump's outsized focus on the violence, which he adamantly blames on cities run by Democrats, and which I hear from you as well, Kaylee, could end up hurting more than helping or even backfire altogether. After all, it's happening under his watch. And Kaylee, that seems to, seems to be the message from Democrats now. Hey, look, this is happening under the Trump presidency. This is happening under his leadership. How does the president he respond? Here's what's left out of that narrative. Under Obama-Biden, violent crime was going up. Under President Trump's first three years, we saw violent crime coming down, breaking what was a national trend. What happened is we've seen the surge in violence directly correlating with the defund the police movement. Guess what? When you defund police officers in New York, in L.A., you will see more violence when there are not police officers on our streets answering the phone. So this is the defund the police movement, which this president's fighting against. But a future Democrat administration, uh, this whole entire country would look like Portland, Oregon. Not an acceptable president. 55 days to go to election day, Kaylee. I want to ask you what election night might look out. The Wall Street Journal, uh, what might look like. The Wall Street Journal this morning asking a key question. This is by the editorial board. Will courts pick the next president? If the election is close, the fallout could make Bush versus Gore look like an ice cream social. In that piece, it says if the presidential election is decided by a whisker with Donald Trump or Joe Biden leading by some thousands of votes in a few states, a court ruling could prove decisive. The pivotal jurisdictions will be flooded with Republican and Democratic lawyers, and the resulting chaos could resemble the 2000 Florida recount with smudged postmarks as the new hanging chads. What does election night look like? And, and, and there's so many different scenarios that could play out. And will we know who the next president is on election night? 
Well, if Democrats have their way, we won't. Look at New York. Look at what happened in New York when they tried this mass mail-in voting that overwhelmed the system. We didn't know the victor of that race for weeks. And as the president has said before, we don't even know if we got an accurate result in that race. When you do mass mail-out voting, which is subject to fraud, don't take it from me, take it from Jimmy Carter and a bipartisan commission, uh, it leads to chaos. And so now you have Democrats trying to break the system with this mass mail-out voting. And this president wants the American people to decide who the president is because he has a very strong record to stand on. So what is the plan for election night then, Kaylee? I, I want to put this USA Today Suffolk uh, University poll. It finds that twice as many Republicans expect to vote in person. Okay, that's 56 percent of Republicans to 26 percent Democrats. And this is as we are getting Brand new information showing that Democrats are dominating the mail-in ballot requests in key swing states. Okay, and obviously we've heard we've heard from the president uh, predicting a rigged election, massive voter fraud. So, what is the election night plan, Kaylee? Yeah, so when you look um, in terms of Democrats casting mail-in votes, um, a lot of Democrats are Trump supporters, I would just note, in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. What we want election night to look like is a system that's fair, a situation where we know who the president of the United States is on election night. That's how the system is supposed to work. Um, and that's ultimately what we're looking for and what we're hoping for. We don't want it to be like Nevada, where you have ballots languishing in trash cans and pinned on apartment bulletin boards. That is not a workable system. Uh, Kaylee, there's um, a big report out from the Congressional Budget Office looking at our budget deficit. We don't talk about it very often, but it is at unprecedented levels. And it's worth pointing out that it has hit a record $3 trillion in August, Kaylee. What is the president's plan as the economy does rebound to, to take this on? Obviously, it was needed with the coronavirus pandemic, and that is the, why we're looking at this right now. But something obviously has to be done about this as we do slowly see the economy recover. What is the president's plan? And Sandra, it's a good question. I spoke with the president about this just before coming and joining you, and he said, absolutely, uh, the debt is a big second-term priority of his. Um, he wants to see unprecedented growth, um, and we'll see that on President Trump's watch. He had the hottest economy in modern history once. He cut taxes for middle-class and hardworking Americans, and what we saw was revenue coming into the federal government increase in 2018 and in 2019, much in the same ilk of President Ronald Reagan. So uh, we believe unprecedented growth Growth will go a long way in solving the problem, but it is certainly a second term priority. All right. I'm sure we're going to have bigger discussions on that in the days and months to come. I uh, want to get your thoughts on the uh, Pentagon set to announce a planned withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq. Uh, that hasn't yet happened, but what can you tell us we are about to hear from the president? That's right. You are going to be hearing about this. A drawdown of troops in Iraq to 3,000 uh, is the number that we're looking at. And look, this is a president. When he says, I'm going to end endless wars, it's not a slogan like it's been for Democrats and past presidents. It is a, a actual truth. It's what he wants to do. When you look across the world, he's defeated the ISIS caliphate. Uh, he met with the Iraqi prime minister, and this was a deliverable from that meeting, this drawdown of U.S. troops. And we believe Iraqi forces are trained and equipped to handle uh, the security of their country. Sorry, uh, the president also being nominated for a Nobel Prize um, by a Norwegian. Uh, what is the president saying about that this morning, and does he expect to, uh, uh, to win that? This is a big deal, and it's well-deserved. You cannot deny what has happened on President Trump's watch. When you look at the fact that we have a uh, Israeli United Arab Emirates peace deal, the first time in 25 years, Serbia-Kosovo, that huge announcement of economic relations, this president's created peace around the world, drew down endless wars, uh, and this is a president who is very much deserving of the Nobel Peace Prize. Kaylee, we covered a lot. We appreciate you coming on this morning. Thank you. See you again Thank soon. Thank you, Sandra. All right.